What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today we're going to be having a look at what's new in Studio One version 3.3. Okay, so first off the bat, one of the biggest new features that we have in Studio One version 3.3 is we have direct integration with Notion, meaning that I can send MIDI note data from Studio One over to Notion, even over a wireless network, as long as it's on the same network, and I can send note information from Notion over to Studio One, and I can also send stems from Notion over to Studio One and it's automatically going to generate a song and it's going to open up the stems. The levels are going to be properly set up on your console and your pans are going to match as well. Now, I'm going to leave that for a separate video just because I want to try to keep everything time-wise down to a minimum if I can on this video because I want to try to cover a lot of ground. So first things first, what I want to hop into is one of the big ones that we've all been asking for. If you head over to the console here, you'll notice this power button. And I can go ahead and press that and keep an eye, keep an eye on all these plugins here and watch what happens. Boom. It just, it's a global activate and deactivate. So what it's doing is it's activating and deactivating all the plugins. Now the cool thing about this is you can also map this out to a shortcut. So in my particular case, I've mapped it out to Option or Alt Command Q so that I can very quickly and easily activate and deactivate the plugins. So that's for a global. If you just want to kill all of your plugins in one shot, we have that. We can either use a shortcut if we want to map it out or we can use the button. Okay, so the next thing that I want to look at is the way some of the new behaviors that we have with how we activate and deactivate selected tracks or how we can bypass or disable. So we're going to go through a couple of those. So first off, I've got all of these tracks selected here, but if I only wanted to work with, let's say, the kick and the snare, I could activate and deactivate these channels as long as they're selected. If I click this activate button, it's going to deactivate them. So essentially anything that we've selected, it's going to respect that behavior. So for instance, I could even do something like closing this micro view over here. As long as all of these tracks are selected, a single click is going to close all of them and then shift clicking them and a single click again would open all of them. And then if I only wanted to select a certain amount of tracks over here and deactivate them, we know that I can do it just like that. Now let's have a look at some other options that we have here. So for instance, I can select the first three tracks over here. If I wanted to bypass these plugins, let's open up one of them to start. Just going to move this out of the way a little bit. We have this drop down arrow over here. I can select this and I could just bypass those one, those three plugins. So then if I select the kick drum track, that's where we are. If I go to the next one, you'll see that that plugin's bypassed. The next one's bypassed. The next one won't be bypassed. And then if I wanted to unbypass all those plugins together, I could select all three of these tracks, grab this drop down arrow, and you can see that bypass is checked off and I can uncheck it. Now we also have some new GUI behavior in terms of how disabled plugins are displayed. Now disable is different from deactivated in that disabled is taking it entirely out of the signal chain. It's not taking any of the resources at all. So watch what happens here. If I right now click disable, keep an eye on the way that pro EQ is lit up here. You can see that not only is the power button off indicating that this plugin is disabled, but it's also kind of grayed out the text here. So that gives us a visual indication that we've disabled those plugins. I can just re enable those by clicking enable. Now, because of this new type of behavior that we have where we can select multiple tracks and do different things, as you might've guessed, we can also do this with sends. So for instance, I've got my reverb sends going out here. Let's go back to the top of the beat track, go to measure two. I'm gonna go ahead and press play. Because I have all these tracks selected, and these are maintaining the relative levels to each other. Now we can take this one step further. So if I wanted to quickly deactivate all of these plugins, the EQ, and also kill my send, which used to be a very, very difficult thing to do. Now let's try it. Done. Okay. So with all of these selected, I'm going to single click to get out of my micro view. Now let's just go ahead and open up our favorites for a second. And I'm going to drag another instance of Pro EQ across everything because I want to show you one more thing. So I'm going to select all these tracks here and I'm just going to drag another instance of Pro EQ here. So 
we can actually do things by plugin rows as well. So for instance, if I wanted to, you know, deactivate everything on a set of selected channels, let's say from here to here, I could use the main one over here, which would kill all the plugins. But if I just wanted to do one row, let's say I had something like slate VCC in on the first instance of all of my channels in the console. And I wanted to very quickly see what that's doing on these particular tracks. I could very quickly kill just that row. So based on the selected tracks that we have in the console, we can activate and deactivate. Or if I wanted to, I could bypass. But keep in mind when we bypass, as for now, version 3.3, there's no visual indication to let us know. So maybe perhaps in the future, they might add something where they have orange text or something to let us know that the plugins are bypassed. But for now, the only way we can know is by clicking and seeing the bypass checked off. Let's uncheck that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove that second Pro EQ that I put. So we'll just go to this drop down menu and we'll remove that over here. Okay, I'm gonna close my console to a shorter view here. Now I wanna have a look at something else that a lot of people have been asking for. We now have the ability to disable tracks. So if I select this track over here, shift click, right click, you can see down here, disable selected tracks. I've gone ahead and mapped this out to a shortcut. For me, I'm using option command X and that's just very, happens to work very well for me. So I can very quickly deactivate these tracks or sorry, disable these tracks. And then of course, selecting them and right clicking them, I can re-enable them. So the great thing about this is that not only are we doing the equivalent of, for instance, taking all of these events here and muting them and then opening up the console and then taking all of these plugins and turning them off one by one, we're doing it all in one shot. So it's much easier for us to do now. So if I wanted to take something and deactivate it, very simple now. All I have to do is simply select the tracks I wanna disable, right click and disable selected tracks. And then you could take this one step further and you could actually go ahead and hide these tracks as well. Or in my case, I have that programmed out to a macro where I can do both at the same time. So I've programmed that out to control option command X and now I've done everything in one shot. Now this also works not just on audio tracks, but it also works on instrument tracks and VSTIs as well. So let's open up another session here. You can see I have Easy Drummer. What I wanna do is the exact same thing. Just gonna right click here, keep your eye on the console here. We can disable track, everything gets grayed out and it's disabled. So that means it's not using any resources at all. It's slightly different than deactivate. So now the next thing I wanna have a look at here is if you hop, hop back over to our main session over here, something you may have noticed while I've been working here, let's bring all these tracks back and I'll bring them back here and let's re-enable them, is you may have noticed that in the bottom right hand corner here, I have some new controls that are beside my master channel. And there's a reason for that. That's because I'm using a Studio 192. So now what happens is in version 3.3, we've got further integration of the universal control app into Studio One 3.3. So what do I mean by that? Okay, well, let's open up universal control. You can see we have some parameters over here. So for instance, I've got mute and I've got my talkback and I've got my talkback assign. So I could right now take two of these out of my talkback assign or let's take three of them out. And then you'll notice in Studio One, we've got these other arrows over here. So this is my talkback source. I can map it out to any input I want. It's currently mapped out to three. I can then adjust the preamp gain right from Studio One. I don't have to go to Universal Control. I don't have to go to my Studio 192. And I can also adjust which outputs that I'm assigning into the Universal Control app. So for instance, I took off three, four, five, six, and seven, eight from the Universal Control app over here. I could simply reassign them if I wanted to by just clicking this tab here and then clicking these three. If I go back to Universal Control App, they've been reassigned. Then of course we have our dim, we have our mute, we have our mono, we even have speaker switching. So if I enable speaker switching in Universal Control, you can see that as I move through here, it's updated in Studio One as well. And that's obviously bi-directional. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this off. Okay, so one of the big things for me one of the things that I was doing manually before is that they've made a huge improvement 
on how they deal with quantizing audio events in a slicing workflow. So for example, I'm gonna take a look at the same set of drum tracks that I used for a tutorial video I did about four or five months ago, which was using you know a beat detective style workflow in Studio One. And essentially what I was doing is I was just simply detecting the transients on my groove tracks and then basically slicing everything up. And then I, you know, developed some macros and some key commands that would help streamline the workflow to make it work better or faster or a little bit more manageable. But that's really not needed anymore because now in version 3.3, I've already gone ahead and detected these transients. All I have to do is after I've done a transient detection here, I can just go ahead and group these tracks go into my guides, I will tell Studio One what I want to use as the guides, and then I want my action to be set to slice. The auto fades no longer happen as a center spliced event. So before, if this was sliced here, and there was a 10 millisecond auto fade that was added, it was cutting into the transient. So now what ends up happening is the event gets sliced based on the bend markers that Studio One has detected, and then if there's any gaps in terms of if there's anything that has to be backfilled or if there's any overlaps, the overlaps get killed, the gaps get killed, we have an autofill and then we can merge them and we can obviously set a quantize value. So now that we've grouped everything, I'm gonna select all of these over here. Let's just toggle Ben Marker on for everything. Keep your eye on what happens here. So let's go ahead and apply this. So you can see that it backfilled the proper amount and it set an automatic auto fades. And this is through the whole entire session now. So if I start scrolling through here, you can see that all of these events have been quantized. But we don't have to deal with any of the gaps anymore. We don't have to do any work manually. So this is huge, huge improvement. So let's back step for a quick second here. And I just want to show you what that would look like. Let's take the auto fades out. And let's take the auto fill out. So this would be just if we were slicing and quantizing. This is what would happen. We would have these areas in the audio where we have potential overlaps or we have potential areas where there's gaps. So when we enable these preferences over here, auto fades, I can set this to be more if I wanted to that to be 15 milliseconds. Auto fill, click apply. There, it takes care of everything. And you can see if you enable the bend markers here, you can see that it's used the audio bend markers, the transient detection, to place that point of the audio on the grid. Talking about the grid for a second, we now have a new value here. So we've got a quarter note triplet value. So that's been added to the grid. And in addition to that, you're gonna see the tape style monitoring back to the way it was in, I believe it was 3.2 because there was a change that happened in I believe it was 3.2.2 or 3.2.3, .3, where the input monitoring was changed. So that's gone back to the previous behavior. Uh, another thing that we have here is we've got some improved performance improvements for the console shaper. So actually, let me just take this for a second and let's just zoom in a little bit here. And I wanna just back out of this. Let's take the bend markers off. Actually, we'll take it off for everything. And again, I would just go ahead here and create an audio part. And that's what would happen if you ticked off merge as well, as it would do all these actions plus create an audio part. So we've got console shaper, we've got some improvements here. We can open up the performance monitor, show devices, and we can see exactly how much CPU resources it being used for these. So there's been some under the hood improvements in terms of the way mix engine effects are being handled now. Okay, next up, this is a pretty big one for anybody who's using Studio One for score, is we have a brand new video engine. And this video engine was actually borrowed from Notion 6. Go ahead and I'm gonna open my video player. Let's click the plus icon. And I'm just gonna scroll over to some areas where I know I have something here. And let's bring in this MP4, I'm gonna click OK. So now we have a really, really nice smooth playback in this video engine. And I'm on an older system, but this is just, it's been fantastic for me. I'm gonna disable my talk back here. Go ahead and play. You can see it's incredibly smooth. They said he would struggle. Go to full screen. Now, one thing to mention here with the new video engine is that Studio One 
and Notion 6. Now use either Microsoft Media Foundation for Windows systems or AV Foundation for Mac OS systems. So it's no longer dependent on QuickTime. And like I said, I've noticed a huge improvement in terms of my system, which is a 2008 Mac Pro. I'm able to play video much smoother now than I ever was in Studio One. I'm extremely happy about this. Now, another thing that we have here is we can now extract audio when you're running the 64-bit version of the application. So a simple click here. Do you want to extract a new track? Yes. Boom. It's there. Very easy to do now. Now, while we're on the subject of improvements and enhancements, another thing that they've done here is that they've added some improvements in terms of the way that Studio One handles MP3 decoding. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for a second, and I'm going to open up a finder window on my system here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to drag in an MP3 file and watch how quick this happens. I'm sure many of you remember waiting for that status bar to complete before. So now in Studio One version 3.3, boom, done. And like I said, I'm on an older system. So that's been a big improvement as well. And last but not least, I want to have a look at one more thing over here. So in Studio One version 3.2, we got introduced to the bracket tool, which kind of made the transform tool, at least for, at least in my opinion, a little bit antiquated. But one area that the transform tool could be really, really helpful in is when working with velocity of MIDI tracks. So let's go ahead and open up a MIDI event over here, or sorry, a note event. And I'm just gonna dial this up a bit so we can see things a little bit better. And now I got the transform tool here I've got it selected over here. I can just make a highlighted selection across here. And then we know exactly how the transform tool works. We can move things up or down. We can take things, we can squash them. We can just grab that handle like this. I can bring things up like this. I could totally augment things with the transform box or the transform tool. So I can make adjustments to my volume ramps, my velocity. It's a really, really helpful feature. So now available in 3.3, we have the transform tool for adjusting our MIDI velocity. And I found it really, really useful because it allows you to very quickly do things like crescendos or adjust your velocities or velocities of a group set of notes as opposed to doing things one at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna do a video on the Notion 6 integration very soon, but in the meantime, I just wanted to get out a video that shows you guys all these fantastic new features. So I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.